we didn't see you there. Our socks are hung nicely by the chimney with care. It's Christmas, oh Christmas, in July, don't you see? Miss Ario, Miss Ario. It's December. What? No way. I've been in this house way too long. Oh, that's okay, Miss Ario. It's been a crazy year. That's right. 2020 has been quite a year. But each year is perfect to spread Christmas cheer. My socks are hung nicely upon all these shelves. My kittens are dressed up like little Christmas elves. Yes, Daisy, that's perfect. But stockings and carols and fires aglow and sleigh rides and presents and playing in snow and cocoa and peppermint and bowls of cookie dough are not what God thought of so long, long ago. All of those things are fun, but trust me, there's something much more to Christmas than trees. Christmas is Christ with us, don't you see? It's God's love for you and God's love for me. Preschoolers, elementary students, and Club 56ers, we are so glad you could join us for our Christmas celebration. Christmas is truly a time to celebrate. After all, God sent his one and only son, Jesus, to the world to live a perfect life, to die on the cross to pay the price for our sins, and rise again so that we can all be a part of God's family. But such super big things can come in small ways. And that's where I think we should start out today. King Jesus didn't need rallies or lights or a craze. He didn't need crowds shouting his name. Jesus came as a baby on an ordinary day. He gave us new light to show us the way, a light that would shine through the darkest of days. And even a small light can make quite a change. The story really begins in the Old Testament. The entire Bible points to Jesus, God's one and only son. God gave prophets the words to tell people about Jesus long before he came to earth. And when Jesus came, he fulfilled those prophecies. Through him, they became true. This part of the story begins in the town of Nazareth. Mary was a young woman who was engaged to a man named Joseph. That means that they were going to be married, but they weren't quite married yet. God sent an angel named Gabriel to speak to her. Can you imagine if an angel showed up at your house? I get excited enough with a prime delivery. <laughs> well, let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 28. And he, Gabriel, came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. Well, that makes sense. If some brilliant angel showed up while I was folding my socks, I would be a little terrified as well. Well, what did the angel do next? Did he give her a cookie? Because cookies always help me when I'm feeling troubled. Well, no, but he did tell her not to be afraid. Oh, well, that could help too. Let's see. It says in the next verse, And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. In other words, Gabriel told Mary that God would work a miracle in her. God would give her the job of having a baby who was Jesus, God's perfect son, and he would be a king. And not just a king who rules a few years and then walks away, or a king who could have his kingdom taken over. Jesus was and is the king everywhere, forever and ever. But then, after Gabriel told all of this to Mary, she asked a very important question. How? She didn't understand how this could possibly happen. She wasn't even married yet, and she definitely didn't feel ready to be a mommy. But Gabriel explained that the Holy Spirit would come to her and do a miracle. God's power would come over her. He said, Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. 
Gabriel taught Mary a very special lesson, that nothing is impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. In other words, Mary said, Okay, God, I'm all in. I'm ready to serve the Lord, and I will trust you. Let it be what God wants it to be. Our story continues in Matthew chapter 1, where Joseph first learned of his dear Mary's son. You see, a baby was not on the radar. In fact, it was something that they thought would come much later. But God had a special plan, don't you see? And Joseph, yes, Joseph, was about to agree. Now Joseph was engaged to be married to Mary. Ah, oh, marrying Mary, that sounds Mary. Well, it would have been, but there was a problem. When Joseph found out that Mary was going to have a baby, he was understandably upset. Well, in their culture, when people were betrothed or engaged, it was serious. The only way to break their engagement was to divorce. Joseph didn't want to put Mary to shame, but he thought he would divorce her quietly. But let's look at Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. It says, But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So God sent an angel to tell Joseph that he didn't have to be afraid. He had a special job to be Mary's husband and to help her raise God's son. And that little baby would be named Jesus, and he would save people from their sins. This was the one the prophets had spoken about. He was Emmanuel, which means God with us. Through Jesus, God is with us. So Joseph did what the angel told him to do. He obeyed God. He took Mary as his wife. And now comes the real gift of our Christmas story. This is the true part where God showed all his glory. To Bethlehem, Mary and Joseph did go. It was not very fancy or covered in snow, but it was something much greater than presents and bows. It was Emmanuel, God with us. Don't you know? Ario, are you really still rhyming? It's hard to quit rhyming when I have such great timing. <laughs> anyway, in those days, there was a ruling that everyone needed to be registered. To vote! Miss Ario, let's not get political. <laughs> These people back then needed to be registered or counted in the census. That way the government could tax them. Ugh, I feel their pain. Anyway, everyone needed to go to their hometown to be counted. Because Joseph was from the line of David, he needed to go to the city of David called Bethlehem with Mary, his betrothed. Let's turn in our Bibles to Luke chapter 2, verse 6. It says, And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. You see... This was the greatest miracle in the history of the world. The Son of God was born as a man. Our king didn't come in a fancy chariot. He wasn't born in a fancy palace. In fact, he wasn't even born in the inn because there was no room for them. He didn't even have a cradle. Mary laid him in a feeding trough for animals. In this humble way, God showed his glory. I so love this story. It is so sweet. But now can we get to the part with the sheep? Oh, the lamb. I didn't even know you were here. <laughs> so nice to see you. Well, of course you're doing a video, aren't you? I'm a star. Oh, well, we're, we're all here to glorify God. <laughs> so let's uh, read on in Luke chapter 2, verse 8. Would you like to read it, Bolan? <laughs> of course. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. 
And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. <laughs> well, I can understand that. I mean, if I was taking Daisy out for a walk, and then suddenly saw an angel and the glory of the Lord, <laughs> which could be like a really bright light, or maybe some burning fire, you know, I, I might be inclined to gasp. <laughs> But the angel said to them, oh, I'm going to read this part, Miss Laura. It's the angel's line. They said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Great job, Bo Lamb. Now let's let Miss Laura read. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. So suddenly there were thousands of angels proclaiming the news about this little baby who would save the world. If I were a shepherd, I'd be getting to Bethlehem pronto, and I'd take the sheep with me, you know, so they could be a part of the manger scene. <laughs> All right, well, I, you know, it seems like I have some Christmas cookies in the oven, so I should probably go get those. Oh, yeah, you should get go to Spoil Lamb. Okay, bye, Bo Lamb. Bye, bye. Have fun learning about the shepherds and sheep. <laughs> bye. Oh my goodness. Bye, Bo Lamb. Let's look at what the Bible says, beginning in verse 15. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds had told them. You see, God used ordinary people to welcome King Jesus into the world. The shepherds were normal people, but God used them to share the good news of Jesus coming into the world. In verse 19, it says, But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The story of Christmas is simple and true. It's God's gift of his son for me and for you. As Mary pondered these things in her heart, so should we treasure them and in the story take part. As the shepherds went and told others with joy, we're called to share this with each girl and boy. This Christmas, tell others of this great news. God gave his son Jesus, and he so loves us too. Now let's turn to John chapter 17, verses 24 through 26. Jesus prayed this to his father, God, when he was an adult. It really explains the love that God showed through his son Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you have given me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. We celebrate Christmas to let the world know that Christmas is not a fable or concert or show. Christmas is a baby born in the hay, the King and our Savior and friend if we may. Let's welcome him into our hearts this year. Wherever you are, let others hear. Your voice glorifying and praising God with your might. Merry Christmas to all. Let's all shine God's great light. Merry Christmas to all. Let's all shine God's great light. Merry Christmas to all. Let's all shine God's great light.